Hey Vlad here, DevInsidey.com and welcome to another video. In the previous two videos, they were kind of hard, right? Uh, they're very theoretical, very abstract. So I thought we would switch it up a bit and uh, create a teeny tiny, uh, small, very fun project. So uh, what you see here is a um, terminal clock. So uh, it just displays the current time, uh, but it uses this um, seven segment uh, rendering that is uh, common for um, you know those old uh, digital watches. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. <music> As always, we're in the Ubuntu virtual machine and we have Sublime on the left and the terminal on the right, uh, which runs SBT and runs our code. Now, we've covered already a lot of ground in this playlist, um, but for this particular video, we need a few more things. So before jumping into the clock, uh, we're gonna discuss uh, a few tiny little things. So we're gonna build a thing called a two-dimensional string, uh, which is just gonna keep uh, track of uh, three rows of strings, basically. There's gonna be the top row, the middle row, and the bottom row. And um, the natural thing um, to do here is, uh, I wanted to take something simple, and Scala already has a few built-in classes that can uh, can just uh, basically be treated as data structures. They, they just keep track of multiple things. And they're called, they're called tuples, and we're gonna talk about them. So somewhere deep in the Scala library, there's a class called tuple2. So uh, we're just gonna do tuple2 equals new, sorry, tuple2. And it has a constructor and you can give it uh, whatever you want in the constructor. So in this case, we're gonna give it a 1337 and a string 1337. Three, They're sometimes uh, known as heterogeneous lists, uh, which means that the types uh, that are inside of the tuple, they can be different. Um, and the thing about tuples is that they cannot change the length, right? So in this case, it's a tuple two, so um, the um, it, it only has two elements, this one and this one. The way you get the values out of it is by using the names underscore one and underscore two in this case. So if you run this code, we should see our tuple, uh, with the first element and the second element. So one, three, three, seven, and one, three, three, seven written at the string. And there's also a tuple three. So if I just duplicate this line, I'm going to replace a 2 with a 3, and we're going to have, I don't know, let's say I have a character, character C, right? And you can just print it out the same way. So it's a type of 3 now, right? 1, 2, and 3. Also, I say tuple, uh, some people say tuple. I'm not really sure uh, which one is correct. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to keep saying tuple. All right, let's run this. And um, let's, have a, let's have a print line in between of them. Um, by the way, I'm still sick, I'm sure you noticed this, so I'm sorry for my voice. Um, now the next thing is, I have no idea why, but there also um, exists a tuple 1. So let's have it over here, uh, tuple 1, tuple 1, and I really don't know why it exists. Um, something, and you deal, you deal with it the same way, right? So you do tuple 1, uh, it, only, it obviously has only underscore 1, let's also have a, <clears throat> let's also have a print line in between of them. Now tuples are so common that there's a, actually a very special syntax for them. So um, for everything that is not tuple one, which again, I don't really know why it exists, uh, you don't have to say new tuple. So you can remove this and we can remove that and everything still should work, right? And for tuple two, there's yet another syntax, um, sugar on top of it. Instead of a comma, uh, we can use an arrow. Right, like this. So it's a minus sign and a greater than sign, right? And if we use that, then we don't even need the braces uh, or the parentheses, like this, okay? I have a few useful methods on them, and um, the only one that I'm gonna show you now is uh, the most common one, which is called swapped. So uh, on the tuple two, uh, let's have a print line over here, right? So we're gonna have swapped equals tuple two swap, and um, let's just do this. Tuple one and tuple two. So you, what, you, what you should see now is that the elements are swapped, and they're not swapped because I'm not using the variable. There we go. All right. So we have one through three seven and the string, and now we have the string and then one through three seven. So they're literally swapped. 
So for our digital clock, we could start using tuples, uh, but the problem with them is that they aren't really type safe. So they're basically just um, just containers for for um, for some data, and we we also want to enforce some constraints uh, when when we're writing the digital clock or in general when we're writing our code. So we want to leverage the the type system to um, to keep track of, of a few things for us. So uh, let's demonstrate that. So we're gonna have a function that that will just add two tuples. Um, so we're gonna have a function called add tuples. And it's just going to get the first one and the second one, and their types are going to be. And I don't want to um, duplicate the type, so I'm just going to have a type alias for them. So I'm going to call it string to int, and it's going to be a tuple two. And over here, you can specify the types like this. So you can just say string and int. And now I can um, we can just use uh, this type over here. So first is a string to int tuple, the second is a string to int tuple, and the result is also going to be a string to int tuple. Okay. And all that it will do is it will construct another tuple. So it will just take the um, first element of the first tuple, it will just add it. I'm sorry, it was the first element of the second tuple, right? And the other element is going to be the same thing, but was the second one, right? So uh, we're adding uh, strings together over here, and we're adding integers together over here. And obviously, we can't have the comma, right? So uh, it should compile but we're not running any code with it. So uh, let's actually run some code with it. So um, let's uh, let's have yet another function that is going to be called string with length. So we give it a string, right? And it will give us this string to int tuple. So it's basically, it's, it's like a constructor. It's just gonna construct the tuple for us. And uh, all it will do, it will say in, and let me scroll down a bit. And remember the fancy syntax for for tuple two. Just gonna the first element is gonna be in, and the other one is going to be int dot length. Okay, so now we can add two tuples by by leveraging this thing. So uh, we're gonna produce a result, which is going to be string to int equals, and I'm just gonna call add tuples. You know the function that we just that we just wrote over here, and the first element is going to be, and now we're gonna leverage this function string with length. So we're just gonna give it a string like hello and it will produce a tuple with hello over here and hello dot length over here and hello dot length is going to be five right so this is the first one comma and the second is going to be uh world which happens to be uh to have the length of five um as well right so and now we're just going to print out the result and print line the result and also let's have a let's have an empty line here over here Right, so uh, we have hello world and ten. This is how how tuples are rendered if we don't do the underscore one and underscore two. But we could also do let's do this and let's let's also do underscore one and underscore two because I only showed this. So hello world length of hello world is ten. And now the problem is that that um, we don't have we're not forced to call this function here, right? So we could produce a tuple manually here. So for example, we could do world and then five. Right, so the the code should be you know the result should be the same. But the problem now is that um, we're we're not doing word uh, dot length over here, right? So we're free to do whatever we want here. So for example, we could do a seven, and all of a sudden uh, we have a bug, right? So uh, all of a sudden it's going to tell us that hello world, the length of hello world is uh, twelve instead of ten, and um, this is where where we're going to leverage the type type system uh, by avoiding tuples. Uh, so instead, we're going to we're going to create our own classes that are just going to keep track of our data, and we're going to put in some um, some constraints in them. So we've learned in the previous videos about the environment model of computation that Scala has this uh, beautiful syntax for for creating um, environments, right? So it's it's those classes, and in fact, this is how tuples are are defined as well. Now I said tuples before I said tuples. Now I'm saying tuples. Okay, just deal with it. Okay. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own class, and we're gonna call it string with length. And now it will um, take a string, right? Some string and the length it will compute it on its own, right? So uh, we're just gonna have a val over here, length, which is an integer, and you're just gonna do string dot length. So so now if we if we're gonna replace um, uh, the string to int here with the string with length everywhere, then uh, we don't even have the possibility to specify the length, which means uh, we have uh, one last um, uh, one less opportunity to introduce a bug, which is which is good, which is something that we we'll want. So let's compile it first. Uh, let's see if we made a mistake over here. No, we didn't. Okay, so now everywhere uh, where we say where we say string to end, we're just gonna replace it with uh, string with length. 
okay? And uh, now we don't need this type alias. And now over here, we're not producing a tuple, we're actually producing a new instance of this thing, right? So we need to say uh, new and then this thing, okay? And it doesn't take uh, two parameters, it, it, it takes only one parameter, right? Because it basically it's gonna, it's gonna do the computation of the lengths for, for, for us. So we don't need to, uh, to care about the lengths, so we're just gonna remove this. And now because these are not tuples anymore, they're actually those classes, then um, the, the, the element that they're keeping track of is not called underscore one, it's called string, right? So we're just gonna do first string plus second string. And now we're actually sort of done here. Um, let's see, let's see if it actually works like this. Of course it doesn't, uh, because we still have this string with lengths, uh, which which tells us that, that it produces this thing, but it actually doesn't. In fact, we actually don't, don't really need it, because instead of that, uh, we're going to use uh, a new string with lengths over here, and we're just gonna give it hello. And now over here, we're gonna do the same thing, and we're gonna give it world, okay? And as you can see, this is exactly what I mentioned before, uh, we actually don't even have an opportunity to, to pass in a wrong length over here, okay? So um, what else do we need to fix? So we can still print out the result, and uh, okay, so they're not called underscore one, and they're not called underscore two anymore, they're called uh, string, and they're called length. So uh, if you run it now, it should look ex uh, pretty much the same as before. Uh, what does it say? Forward reference extends over definition of value result. Oh, okay, so the problem is that uh, we need to put this class higher. Uh, so it needs to be it needs to happen before before this vowel is happening. So let's just move it um, over here. All right? I believe this should fix that. Let's see. And yeah, we have the same thing. Uh, it's just that printing out the result uh, looks kind of like this now. It says main, uh, which is uh, this object, and then there is a dollar, and there is a string with length, which is the name of this class over here, and then there is an add symbol, and there are some numbers. Uh, we're going to talk about in the, in the in the future videos about exactly what is happening here, uh, but uh, before we fix this, uh, let's actually move this up that at, that at least we don't have this main dollar thing. So uh, let's have it over here, a string with length, and so now at least it's gonna it's gonna just look like this string with length at and then, and then something else. By the way, we should also probably re rename add tuples to just add, because now it just adds uh, both of these um, elements. And in fact, uh, what, what we could also do, uh, because you know this clearly works on, on, on string with lengths, we could actually put this, this method inside of string with lengths. Uh, so let's actually do that. Let's, let's copy that and bring it into this class over here like this and now it doesn't need it doesn't need the first anymore because the first one is going to be this one right so it's just gonna get the second one let's call it that right and uh, we instead of first we can use this so it's just gonna do this string plus that that string and now the way we the way we call it is not like that the way we call it is by doing um, new string with length dot hello and then dot dot add and then the second one new string world like this okay <laughs> yes and now because 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 we were adding them them both together we can actually call it um, first of all we can we can call it like this with the infix notation uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna work okay that that, that actually worked so um, I, I wasn't sure if it would do uh, you know it would scope scope them like this so that it would introduce those uh, parentheses like this I wasn't sure all right, uh, let's revert that. Okay, so now we can call it plus because Scala, Scala allows um, us to use you know symbolic uh, methods instead of um, uh, alphanumeric um, methods. So we're just gonna have a plus here, and now we're gonna have this new string with lengths plus new string with lengths. Next thing that we're gonna do, and we're gonna discuss this in the future uh, in in more depth. In Scala, if you have um, instead of just using class, if you do final class, I'm sorry, final case class. Then Scala sort of knows that this is going to be a data structure. And because it's a data structure, it will um, generate a few things, like for example, uh, an implementation of the so-called toString method that, that renders it like this, right? So before, before we did this, it looked like that. It looked like string with lengths add something. But now that we added this final case, 
it actually looks more beautiful. And it also com comes with, with a few other things. Uh, one thing is we don't need to have a val here because, um, because it knows that it's a data structure and data structures, they expose data, right? So it knows that this thing needs to be public anyway, like this. And another cool thing that it is doing is it generates a so-called companion object. So what it's also doing is it generates an object called string with length and it generates a function here called apply. And apply looks exactly like the constructor. So it takes the string, right? And it produces an instance of this class, string with length, okay? So all, it, all it's doing is, is basically just saying new string with length and passing it, passing it the string. And because, it, because, um, because uh, this thing is over there, uh, we can now, instead of, instead of using the constructor everywhere, uh, we could just call this apply function. So instead of new string with length, we can say string with length dot apply, and we don't need the new uh, symbol anymore, right? So let's, um, actually we don't need those tuples anymore. Let me remove those tuples like this, okay? So um, now we just have this, and now over here, instead of new, uh, we're just gonna remove the new, and we're gonna do string with length dot apply. And yet another thing um, that, that you need to know about Scala, every time you have a function called apply, you don't have to, you don't have to call it. The compiler will do it for you. So everywhere where we say dot apply, just because it's called dot apply, we can just, re we can just uh, remove it. So now um, the code is doing exactly the same thing, but it looks more like a constructor, right? So before we had, new string with length, and we can still do new string with length if we want to, but we don't have to. So we have string with length like this. And um, everything that I've shown you so, so far is going to be very, very uh, important for uh, for our digital clock, because remember I said that, you know, um, the, 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 the characters that we're going to be displaying, they're going to have a top row, a middle row, and a bottom row, and we're just going to add them together. and. Um, so basically, we're going to have a class that doesn't keep track of one string, it's just going to keep tra track of, of three strings, right? So it's like, it's like a top of three. We're almost ready to jump to the clock, but um, before we do that, um, let me just 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 uh, give you another showcase of, of case classes in Scala, so because they're very, very typical for, for data. So uh, we're just going to have, um, by the way, I noticed that we have the sprint line over there. Let me get, get rid of it. So uh, when I'm going to have a final case class uh, person. And uh, it just got, it's just basically it's just a bag of bag of data, right? So it's gonna have a name. The person has a name, has an age, has a phone. Uh, it has I don't know email, right? And now in our code, um, let me hmm, what should we do? Let me comment this out, okay? So now in our code, in our code, we can just say okay, uh, let's construct a Bob, right? So Bob is a person, and uh, let me scroll down a bit, right? Uh, that's too much because I still want to see the person. Okay, so name is um, Bob, and um, age is I don't know twenty. Bob's twenty. Uh, let's also do that. And um, phone equals. Let me actually copy copy paste that from um, from my script. Phone is this. Okay, and um, and email is bob at gmail.com, okay? And now we can print out bob, print out bob, and we can also print out bob.name, age, phone, and email. And it's gonna look like this unless I made a typo somewhere. So we have a person which is with the name of Bob, 20 years old, this is the phone number, this is the email, right? And um, the tuples, they're, they're, basically, they're basically defined very, very similarly, right? So uh, everywhere we say person, I'm gonna say uh, T4, um, because you know, tuple four already exists, so I'm just gonna use T4. And everywhere we're saying name, we can use underscore one. I'm just, I'm just showing you the parallel, right? So uh, age is underscore two, I forgot this one, underscore two. And this one is just the next one, underscore three. And this one is underscore four. And now everything works, still still works the same, but we're not giving, a, um, giving it a proper name. Uh, in fact, Java has a nominal uh, type system, which means basically uh, you create your types by giving them a name, right? So, and then eventually it's gonna compare names and know, okay, it's the same type. All right, we're ready to start with the clock. So uh, let me remove um, this whole nonsense, right? And let's just have a, Let's for now at least just have a hello world over here, right? Um, we don't need we don't need this thing, 
uh, actually we could use we could we can reuse string with length so first of all uh, we don't need this object anymore because you know this was just a demonstration uh, and actually Scala, Scala it still generates it right so it's still there you just don't see it right uh, so we're gonna have a string with length but we're gonna call it a two-dimensional string two-dimensional string okay and instead of one string over here it will track, as I already mentioned, it will keep track uh, of um, of rows, right? So it's going to be the top row, the middle row, and the bottom row, okay? And it will also have, well, it's not going to have length, right? Uh, but it will also have a function called plus, right? And it will just produce a two-dimensional string where um, it's going to do... It's just going to add the tops, right? And by the way, we can also use name parameters. So the new top is going to be this, right? And let's just have a middle here and a bottom over here, right? And we just need to remove the comma. And let me also inline this like this, okay? This is this is going to be the the, the basis for for a digital digital clock. Those um, those two dimensional strings that have a top row, a middle row, and a bottom row. And we're going to have two functions um, on them. Um, so the first one is plus, the other one is show. They just help our functions, right? And all we'll do here is just going to print line rendered. And the rendered is going to be another function. And we're not going to be calling it from the outside, so I'm just going to make it private this. You absolutely don't have to do this uh, if, you know, if, you, if you're going to build on top of this example. The whole example is going to be on GitHub anyway, right? So uh, it's going to be called rendered. And just going to produce a string. So and all that it will do is it will say top plus backslash n plus the same thing was the middle not sure why sublime jump, jumped over there let me inline it like this over here okay and bottom and and that's it so uh let's uh let's start playing around with it so uh let's create a a two-dimensional string right and we're gonna say that top equals um i don't know um like this one, two, um, like this. And the middle row, so like this. Uh, the middle row is gonna be a question mark, like this. And the bottom row is also gonna be a question mark, okay? So if we do this and we just say dot show, then we should see that thing. So uh, let's let's do something else. Let's do, um, like an actual actual digit, uh, so let's have an um, underscore here. Sorry, and uh, let's 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 have like an eight, okay? So an eight. Oh my God, I'm sorry, really sorry. So an eight is gonna look something like this. This is gonna be an underscore as well. Uh, it looks much easier than it actually is, right? Look, this, this looks like an eight now, okay? So uh, if you print it out, it will also look like an eight. Uh, let's produce a, let's, let's, let's also do a seven, just for fun. Uh, let's do a seven. So seven's gonna look like that, seven. Okay, so this is a seven. So now we're showing an eight and now we're showing a seven. So let's, let's not show them. Uh, let's actually store them in variables, right? So we're gonna have an, um, Eight over here, and let me do this. Let me do a seven over here, right? And what we want to do now is we want to say seven plus eight, right? Because we have a function called plus, and um, this is going to be the result. And now we're going to say result result dot show. And there we go, seven, eight, and this is the basis for our clock. And because I said, you know, that that we have like more type safety when we when we create our own class, uh, let's actually add an, an assertion in there. So uh, as you can see, those eights and the, the you know the eight and the seven, all the rows they have the same length. And I don't believe that this is a coincidence. So we, we want we want to sort of enforce this. Uh, obviously, we can't enforce this um, at the type level. Uh, but we can uh, make sure that every time at least you create um, a two-dimensional string that if something goes wrong it's just gonna explode right away so it's not gonna wait until some some point later okay and the way we do this is by uh, I sort of didn't mention this in the in the previous video where we, where we started talking about classes um, but um, everything that is that is not a you know not a definition not a vowel not a lazy vowel in this scope 
it sort of runs on creation. It's called it's called the constructor. Um, so if I say, for example, print line high over here, then you know because we, we because we created um, three two-dimensional strings. You know, the first one was eight, the second one was seven, and the third one was a combination of seven and eight. Because we created them three times, we see this high three times. So what we can also do here is we can start calling methods over here, right? And the methods that we're going to call is there's there's a function called um, the method or function doesn't really matter. Um, that, that already exists in the Scala Center library is called require. So all that require will do is it has two parameters. Uh, the first one is the actual requirement, which is a Boolean. So let's say false. Uh, actually, let's say true. So and, um, and the second parameter is the message. So the message in our case, so we want to we make sure that, that everything has the same length, every row. So uh, if, if the requirement fails, then we will see an exception uh, with this message. Uh, all rows must have the same length. Okay, so if the requirement is, is true, then nothing's going to, everything's going to be fine. But if it's false, then it's going to throw an exception, and it's going to say uh, all rules must have the same length. Okay, so now uh, let's actually replace it with a with a valid requirement. Uh, let's call it do all rules have same length, and this is just going to be a tiny def here. Okay, which is going to return a boolean, and it's going to say uh, top dot length equals middle dot length and middle dot length equals bottom dot length which is a very transitive property right so uh, as soon as we break an eight for example like this uh, it should throw an exception which is kind of cool right uh, let's fix it back like this okay the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to create a uh, file to dimensional string and put it in there. We're gonna have like five files or something for for this whole block. So let's just create a new file and save it as two dimensional string dot scala. Right. So if I press Control KB now, uh, we're gonna see that in our source main folder Scala, we have main now and we have the two dimensional string. So let's go to to main and just uh, copy out the whole the whole string and put it in here and um, remove it from here. Save this one. Everything is safe, so it's, it's over here now, right? So uh, in our main, we're just gonna keep concentrating on the clock. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a companion object for this thing, companion object like that, and we're just gonna we're just gonna have a few constants for uh, of two dimensional strings. Um, the one is gonna be called question marks, question marks, mark, marks, okay, and it's a two dimensional string, right? And it's a two-dimensional string that looks like this. So it has a top, you know, everything has a top, um, middle, and bottom. And it's gonna have a comma, a comma. All right, like this. So it's gonna be the question marks that we did before. It's gonna be like this. Question mark. Ah, sorry, sorry for that. Trying to tap fast, but it doesn't really work somehow, right? So we have a question mark like this, and I'll just copy that over here, right? So uh, let me compile it. All right. So for example, uh, now in in main, uh, we can just do um, uh, two dimensional string dot question marks dot show, and we should see our question marks over here, right? Cool. Um, the other one, let me just copy paste it. It's gonna be it's gonna be an empty two dimensional string um, because I know that we're gonna need it in the future. Just just an empty one. Okay. Okay. So as of right now, we're we're actually done with two dimensional string. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do a two dimensional digit, right? So it's basically gonna it's just gonna have it's, it's it's gonna be an object like this, which is just gonna um, have all of those digits hard coded. In fact, uh, you know what? I'm actually gonna copy paste it. I just decided. It. Okay. So let's create a new file called. Um, two dimensional digit dot scala, right? And it created over here two dimensional digit, and uh, it's going to be an object. Two dimensional dimensional digit. My God, my, my voice is leaving me. I'm sorry. All right. So over here, uh, let me actually copy paste that. Uh, we're going to have all of these numbers. So let me let me just copy paste a few of them, like this. So um, I forgot to copy paste one line, I'm sorry. Um, the zero, which is over here. So we're gonna have a zero, we're gonna have a one, we're gonna have a two, and so on. Let me let me let me paste the other ones. 
um, like that. Let's put them over here, like that. And of course, I need to format them a bit better. Okay, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And the other thing that we're going to have here is a function called create. Um, so all it will do is it will t it will take a digit, which is just a regular integer, and it, it will basically convert it to a two-dimensional uh, string. Right. So what it will do is it's just going to have like a crazy pattern match. It's just going to say if digit equals zero, well then return a zero. Else if digit equals one, well then return a one. And then it's just going to continue like this. And as a very like last step, it's going to say as it is the is last thing. Uh, just do question marks, right? So if not if none of them if none of the matches, just just return a question mark. Uh, let me save it like this. Um, what is what is it doing? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, reassignment to val. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a very typical uh, mistake. So we're actually not assigning anything. We're just using the equal sign, right? So let me do this and let me do that. I think it's just gonna make more sense if it looks like this. Okay. So um, it's, it's obviously not complete, uh, but let's play with it uh, for a bit. So let's let's remove everything over here. And let's say two dimensional digit of one. Um, so right, and it says it doesn't take parameters. Oh yeah, uh, we, we forgot to call the function. We just call create. In fact, you know what we should do? Uh, let's call it apply. Uh, let's also do two. Uh, let's call it apply. And if we call it apply over here, apply, then uh, we don't have to say create here, right? So we're basically, it looks like we're creating a two dimensional digit um, just based off of an integer, right? So it doesn't know the two. Uh, why does it, it know the two? It knows, okay, it knows zero and it knows one. Uh, so let's do zero and let's do, let's do one. Okay, so we have zero and we have one. And as we have already seen, if it doesn't know something, it's just gonna show us the question marks, okay? So uh, let me actually paste uh, the implementation for this from um, my script, like that. This is the implementation. So it has it has all of them now, so now it, now it also knows the two. And uh, we haven't discussed this in the previous videos um, yet, uh, but uh, Scala has a very, um, very convenient um, syntax for for pattern matching. We're gonna have an entire video separate, uh, you know, dedicated just to this this topic alone. So um, every time that you're making your your big uh, decision based on just one element, uh, then you can just match on it. So instead of instead of doing this, uh, let's have let's have um, apply two uh, also takes a digit and produces a two dimensional string. Right? On over here, we're gonna match on the digit. This is a syntax. Digit match, and then we're just gonna say case. So if it's a zero, then return a zero. If it's a one, return a one. And, and the very last case is going to be, I'm sorry, the very last case is going to be, okay, if it's something else, and the syntax for something else is this, then just do the question marks. So as you can see, it's a bit shorter, but it's uh, sometimes less, a bit less, less flexible. Because for example, like this over here, you can say if digit equals four, and you know some other boolean, right? So it's you know uh, pattern matching is sometimes flexible, and and um, uh, you know for some for some examples, and um, this one is sometimes flexible for some other examples. So um, let me remove uh, both of them and um, actually copy paste the one that I have prepared, uh, which is which which uses pattern matching, right? So I'm just gonna paste it over here. Same as before, right? Uh, digit comes in, we just match on it, and uh, giving back those those vowels. And in the last case, we're we're giving the question mark. So it didn't didn't actually change anything. The next element that we're building is the um, two dimensional time, right? So it's going to be basically a function that that is that is going to be a pattern of how to display the time, and it will get the current time and will convert it to this whole thing, and it will it will show it. Okay. So let's create another file called. Uh, two dimensional time time dot scala okay and as always it created it over here two dimensional time so we have main two dimensional digital digit string and time so uh, time it's also going to have a um, an object two dimensional time okay and it's going to have uh, basically just one 
uh, public function. It's going to be a cold show current. It's going to take a pattern, as I just said, string, and what it will produce is a unit, right? Because it will basically print line some stuff. And uh, what it will do is it will call another function called show, the one that we're going to implement in a few seconds, and it will do local date time dot now and pattern. So local date, local date time, it is actually coming from the um, Java standard library. So we need to import it. Uh, we haven't discussed the importing syntax um, just yet, uh, but basically bear with me for a second. So Java, Java dot time, local date time, like this. Obviously, it doesn't compile because uh, we haven't implemented the function called show yet, so it just doesn't exist. But all that importing is doing is basically so instead of because we're gonna we're gonna use this uh, quite a few times, so instead of um, doing this all the time, uh, we can just uh, use local date time directly, and this is all that that importing is doing. So it's importing um, this namespace basically. Um, in, in fact, it only imports um, this local date time uh, class from uh, this namespace, okay? So let's continue, let's implement this function called show. And um, everything everything uh, in this object is going to be private, uh, except for this, except for show card. So it's gonna do um, show, right? And it's gonna take the time, local date time. And um, this is also already the second time that we're using it. And this is why we, we have used this import uh, so that our code gets, gets a bit more concise. And I forget the dev keyword over here. Okay, so it takes the local date time and it takes the pattern which is a string, and it doesn't return anything useful, so unit, okay? And it's just gonna call another function called formatted, uh, the one that we're gonna write in a few seconds, and it's just gonna keep um, past the time and the pattern, and then it's gonna call show. And this is the, the show function that we implemented on the two-dimensional string. So remember, two-dimensional string has a function called show. So we already know that the function formatted, uh, the one that we're gonna uh, implement over here, uh, private this def um, sorry formatted uh, whatever it takes as parameters it will return uh, a two-dimensional string two-dimensional string right because we want to call um, show on it okay so um, the parameters are actually the same so as you can see it just passes them along time and pattern like this okay and the implementation is actually uh, quite a bit involved. So this is actually the sort of the meat of this whole digital clock. So two things uh, need, need to happen in this. So the first thing is that we need to actually form at the time uh, with this pattern in, in the one dimension, right? And then take that and go through that and accumulate, you know, a longer two dimensional string. So uh, we're going to have a variable here, and I'm going to show you in a second uh, how to get rid of the variable because, you know, uh, as we discussed in the previous video, uh, variables and mutable states are, you know, they're, they're frowned upon. So the result, uh, which is a two-dimensional string, as we, as we already said, you know, we're going to re return the two-dimensional string. So uh, by the end of this um, function, uh, we're going to return a result, okay? And the default value, you know, what it starts with is two-dimensional string dot empty, which is this guy over here. This is this is why we, we created it, right? So uh, it should actually already work, right? So uh, because it, it doesn't do anything, right? But we can, uh, at least we can already call it. So we can um, say two-dimensional time uh, show current. So uh, let's do it over here. So two-dimensional time dot show current. And it wants a pattern. And let's right now as a pattern not, not give it anything. Um, and it, it, it gives us a, an empty two-dimensional string. You can already see uh, a little bit there are like two rows. Um, sorry, three rows. One, two, three. Hold on. One, two, three. There we go. Three rows. So the pattern that we're going to use is um, two digits with hours. And the capital H means that we use the 24 um, time format. And if you wanted the 12, you know, AM and PM thing, then you would do HH like this. Okay, so HH. And then we want a um, colon. And then we want minutes. And then we want seconds, okay? Uh, but as of right now, our implementation completely ignores the, 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 the pattern and actually even even the time, okay? So uh, the first thing that it will do is it it, it needs to produce this one dimensional um, one dimensionally formatted uh, time. So let's call it one dimensional one dimensional, right? It takes the time, takes the pattern, okay? And let's implement it. So private this def one dimensional and it takes the same thing as always, time and pattern, right? But it produces a string, 
Okay, and all it's doing is it says time dot format. So we're calling format on on the time, right? And as a parameter, we're we're passing a a so-called formatter. So we go to date time formatter dot off pattern. So uh, it's an object that has a function off pattern, right? And it takes the pattern, and that's it. All we need to do now is we need to import it. So it comes from Java time format dot datetime formatter. Okay, so we're, pr we're producing it over here, but we're not doing anything with it yet. So all we need to do is we need to go through it. And every element is going to be this, this time digit, right, as a, as, a, as a character. So it's just a, a string. So to one dimensional returns a string. And we're going to go through every character of that string, which is a basically time digit character thing, right. And we're going to say we're going to do this. So if time digit if it's equal to a colon, right? Uh, because it's very typical for time patterns to have a colon, but obviously it's going to explode, right? If it doesn't have, you know, if if it, if it passes in a pattern that doesn't contain a colon, but uh, you know, for the, for for this example, um, we we actually have enough type safety. Okay, so if if it's a colon, then add to the result stars. Remember those stars from from the very beginning of the video. In fact, we're going to define stars over here to them in in, in two dimensional. Um, in two dimensional time, right? So we're gonna have val stars equals, uh, let's actually specify the time. So it's a, it's a two dimensional, no, string, right? Two dimensional string, right? And we're gonna have a top equals just empty strings, three of them. The middle is like this, right? It's basically like, like question, actually. Uh, let me, let me copy the question. Let me copy the question and put it here, right? Uh, but instead of the question, we're just gonna have the star. And the scale compiler warns us that we actually made a mistake because we're comparing a a character to a string. So what I wanted to have in was a character here, right? So if it's um, this character, then add stars to the result. And this is why we already see we already seen two stars, okay? So uh, because uh, our pattern contains two stars. Right, so we said over here. So um, if it if it contains, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, if it, it contains two two columns. So um, uh, if it's a column, then add stars. So because we have uh, two columns, we have two times those stars. So we have four stars. Okay. So otherwise, if it's not a column, right, then we want to add something else to the result. Okay, and we're adding a two dimensional not string digit. And we just need to uh, pass it the time digit. And the problem is that uh, you know it's a character, and if we, if we let Scala automatically uh, convert the character into an integer, it will just take the ASCII value. So and uh, so um, you know a one is going to be um, what is it? What is it actually? Um, let's let's do print line time digit as a Oh, what well, it is already a character. Let's print it out. So uh, we have one, four, three, one, one, two, five. Oh yeah, so it's digits. Uh, but if we convert it to character, uh, I'm sorry, I meant I meant to integer, right? Because uh, we have we have those numbers as characters, but if we convert them to integers, then we get their their ASCII values. So this is not what we need. So what we need is we need to convert it to string first, and then to int, right? So now now we have the, we have them back, and we need to do the same thing over here. We need to convert it to string first and then to it and now we actually see our time already so let me remove this print line and let me remove that and by the way before we continue this is this is a um scala um syntactic um thing so if you call if you if you have a method like um where's our two-dimensional string over here it has a function called oh didn't render okay there we go so it has a function called plus so if you if you call your function like plus or times, and I don't remember the exact rules, but basically if you call it something like mathematical like this, then uh, Scala will help help you out with this thing. So instead of saying um, result equals result plus stars, which is you know the same thing, right? Uh, we can do the we can do this plus equals. So if if it was called um, 
for example, if it wasn't called uh, plus, I think if you call it, um, I don't know, followed by, for example, followed by, let me copy that and go back to two-dimensional time. So we can't, we can't just do this, followed by equals. It's not gonna work, right? It would work if we do, you know, the full, the full thing. You know, if you say result equals result followed by stars, which actually kind of kind of reads better, right? Result equals result followed by two-dimensional digit, um, right? So this this still would work, but this other uh, cool thing, cool syntax was you know followed by equals is not going to work, um, right? So let's revert that to plus equals and let's call it plus again. Okay, so uh, now we actually sort of have have the whole meat. So all we need to do now is we need to to let it tick. So we're basically uh, only missing the the main method. So um, let's go to main, and in fact we're gonna we're gonna have two of them. Uh, let's remove this code thing, and we're not gonna we're not gonna use the those hyphens anymore. So we're gonna have um, one main, which is this one, and we're gonna call it tick for few seconds. By the end by the end of this video, we're gonna have two mains. So tick for a few seconds. So what it will do is, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna write the whole thing down, and we're gonna call a bunch of functions that don't exist yet, and then we're gonna implement them. So we're gonna have an object called Scala, uh, the one that we're gonna create in a few seconds, and it's gonna have a function called loop, and we can just tell it how many times, and uh, we're gonna keep, pass it a constant called few seconds, and maybe let's let's actually start creating this um, this constant object. So we're gonna have a, we have a, we're gonna have an object called constants. And it's gonna have a val called few seconds, uh, which is just an integer. And let's do let's do three. And over here we can just import constants, right? So we want to loop uh, for you know for three times we want to loop something, and this is what we want to loop. So we're just gonna pass it uh, a second parameter. Remember the video about uh, function carrying and um, and, and closures, right? So uh, this is the code that, that it will do. And um, all we need to do right, right now is we need to say two dimensional two dimensional time dot show current. Remember, this is how we called it two dimensional time show current. And we're going to pass it the pattern, and it's going to be the time pattern that one that we're going to put over here. So the time pattern. Which is a string equals h h m m s s. Okay, so uh, for now this is this is all we need to do, and we're also going to have a Scala dot wait. So we want we want it to tick every second, right? So we're going to have an interval, interval, and the interval is going to be a so-called finite duration, and Scala uh, allows us to do this. We can do one dot one that second and finite duration comes from Scala concurrent duration and we're gonna we're gonna import everything that is in there and one of the things in there is a special functionality that allows us to have an integer and then just call dot second on it or dot seconds or dot millis or nanos or you know hours days whatever so uh, it will loop for for a few seconds it will it will show the time and it will it will wait uh, wait in this case for for one second. So all we need to do now is we need to create this object called Scala, and we need to implement those functions loop and wait. And before that, let's uh, actually uh, also have a print line after the whole loop. Okay, so it's just gonna uh, loop everything and it's just gonna print out, print out an empty line. I'm gonna see why in a few seconds. So as 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 we expected, it says okay, I don't know what Scala is. I don't know you know what loop is or wait is. So uh, let's create another file called Scala dot Scala. And as always, it's created over here, and it's going to be object Scala. So let's implement wait first. Wait is kind of simple. It's going to get the delay, which is also a finite uh, duration, uh, which also comes from um, Scala concurrent duration, like this. So wait returns a unit, and all it will do is it will thread sleep for delay. And thread.sleep expects milliseconds. So what we need to do is here is we need to do two millis. Okay, so now we have wait. And all we need to do now is we need to implement loop. Loop, and we actually implemented a loop um, in, in the video about function currying, uh, I believe. Yeah, I believe in this one. 
uh, function carrying or or high order function no function carrying for sure so uh, it's going to have two parameters this is why in, it was defined in function carrying so it's going to have the times which is an integer and it's going to have some code which is going to be this uh, by name parameter so it's just going to be some random code that returns a unit and this whole function is going to return a unit okay all it will do is it will create a range from one to times and it will just do for each and it's going to ignore the index right usually it's it's called i or something but we're not going to use it over here and all it will do is it will run some code like this and as we can see already we have our time it ticks every second three times which is kind of cool and we're almost done uh let me close that a bit um so all we need to do uh, now is to add two lines over here so we want to have a terminal dot clear canvas which is a metaphor that I'm going to use from, 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 from games. You know, when you do game development, you usually you have like your canvas and you draw something on it and then you basically redraw it every, every frame, right? So every, every second or something, right? And terminal is, is an object that we're going to implement as well. So we're going to do terminal clear canvas. Uh, let's do that for now. Just terminal dot clear canvas because uh, I don't want to see this, right? This is, this is why we need it. Uh, I don't want to see this. And also every time it, it prints something new, uh, I, don't want, I don't want to see the old stuff. Right, clear canvas. Let's save the file, and it's going to complain that the terminal doesn't exist yet. So let's create a new file called terminal.com. Okay, and as always, it's created over here. Uh, so I'm, I'm just always pressing uh, Control N, which creates a new file, and it saves the file um, at the same place where the file that I press Control N from. Um, where, where it exists. So if I'm, I'm in main and uh, main is over here, so if I press Control N and then I save the file, then it knows, okay, main was over here, so probably this is where, where I want to save it. Okay, so let's go to terminal. Uh, this is over here is the terminal. Okay, we're going to have object terminal. Okay, and we're going to have a function called clear canvas, which doesn't take any, any parameters and returns a unit. So all we will do is it will print, not print line, it will print. And it will print a very special uh, ANSI escape code. And the link is going to be down in the description to, to the ANSI codes. I already mentioned them in, in a few previous videos. And I'm also going to mention a really cool tutorial about them. Okay, so uh, we need to use a Unicode character 001B, right? And then this, and then two, and very important, it has to be a capital J. Right, so uh, I didn't remember that. I have it in my script, uh, and it, there, there's like a list of ANSI codes that a terminal interprets um, in in very um, in very cool ways. So as you can see, it clears the canvas every time. So we see only the current the, the current time. Everything else is is gone. So let me save again. You see, gone, gone, gone. So all we need to do now is we also need to uh, just just make it go up a few lines. And uh, for that, we're gonna have another functional terminal. Uh, called go up and we're just going to give it lines to go up uh, which is going to be over here lines to up which is just an integer and the cool thing about it is that if we give it too much it will not go up too much because it knows where the terminal begins so what we can basically give it uh, as much as we can so we're just going to give it an int max value right and let me sort this actually by name. There we go. Okay, so this go up function doesn't exist, obviously. So we need to create it first. Um, do, 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 do. Go up, go up, it takes lines, which is an integer, produces a unit. And it's just going to do um, a similar thing. It's going to print some code, right? And in this case, uh, we're going to inject those lines into the code. So we're going to use a string interpolated string so we're going to use string interpolation and we're going to do the same thing in the beginning so we need to do the 001 b trick and our code is going to look uh, a bit different this time so it's going to be uh, something something a right so this is this is a number of lines so in this case uh, we're going to surround it with uh, parentheses and we're going to use the variable lines and something is wrong i believe let's see oh no it's not wrong Okay, so every time, um, let, let's make a loop a few more times. Let's let's do like um, 20, you know, while, while I talk, you can, you can look at the clock. So uh, it loops a few times, in this case, 20 times, and it clears, clears the canvas on every frame, so to say. It goes up as many lines as it can, and then it shows the current time, and then it waits for 
one second and we're actually done with with this main so what we're going to do now is we're going to implement the second main and this one is just going to display the time until we press enter so what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to stop um this continuous uh, running uh, and we're going to switch to continuous compilation, right? So this is going to be enough for now. So uh, we're just going to have another object and this one is going to be called um, tick until enter is pressed, okay? And it's also going to have a main, just going to duplicate it and bring it down like bring, bring it up like this. Okay, uh, it's going to it's going to look very, very similar. So instead of uh, Scala loop, we're going to say tick until enter is pressed okay and we're going to pass it the interval and we are going to uh, do the same thing we're going to do terminal clear canvas and then we're going to do terminal go up lines to go up and this is why we use this constant object because i knew that we we're going to have you know the main two times and didn't want to repeat the code okay and um now we're gonna have the same thing as over here, right? And that's it. So we don't need we don't need anything else. We don't need the waiting because uh, it will do the waiting for us somehow inside of this inside of this thing. And uh, we also don't need print line because uh, as soon as we type something in and press enter, we're gonna have an, uh, another line um, anyway, right? Uh, let me compile it. Okay, so it doesn't exist yet. Uh, in fact, you know what? I just remembered that I wanted to show you how to get rid of um, of this var. Um, over here of this var. Let, let's do that first. So let me just comment this out and uh, go to uh, two-dimensional time. And um, this is a bit more complicated, and I haven't explained this yet in my you know in my previous videos. And I'm trying to keep these videos uh, you know sort of chronological. I'm trying to use only the concepts that I have explained so far. Uh, this is why I use this var. Okay, uh, but in fact, uh, let me let me copy paste this, right? Let me copy paste this. Let me call this uh, formatted two. Okay, and um, all we need to do here is instead of for each, right? Uh, we're gonna say so, and, and for each, we can also we can also use the syntax dot for each. So instead of dot for each, we're gonna use dot fold, right? And fold takes two parameters instead of one. It takes um, the the element that it's so called seed. What it what it should start with, and what it starts is this thing, right? This thing, and whatever it's doing over here, it will produce this result. So we actually don't need the result, and this is how we got rid of the var. So we're returning whatever fold returns, and it actually it's not called fold; it's called fold left. Let me actually maximize uh, Sublime real quick. So um, this this function, you know, when when we when we called for each over here, uh, it was a function that that was taking only one parameter. This function takes two parameters. It takes a time digit, and guess what? The result. This is the comeback of the result. And all it needs to do is instead of mutating the result variable, it just um, it just needs to return the new result. So all we need to do is we need to remove those equal signs, and that's it. We're done. Uh, let's see. Save it. It's running. So uh, look at the similarities. Like um, I'm, I'm going to have a separate video that that explains all of these, you know, uh, high order functions, high order methods on collections. And um, but at least at least right now, you know, you, you have both of them, and I'm going to leave them. Um, I'm gonna leave them like this, you know. Let me let me put this one down uh, somewhere over here. So it's still there, but it's not called. Uh, let's do just for education purposes. And I'm I'm actually gonna do gonna do the same thing for um for the two dimensional digit. Uh, let me let me copy copy it uh, from from my script like this. So I'm just gonna have it over here. It's going to be called apply, apply to, and I'm also going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to say just, I'm going to say for education purposes, like this, um, do, 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 for educational purposes. All right, educational, educational. All right, so now, so now you have it. There is no var, no var whatsoever. Um, yeah, let's go back to our terminal. Uh, in fact, now the terminal, um, the main, which does this, right? So all we need to do now, we wanted to implement this function, uh, tick until enter is pressed. And we're gonna go here, and we're gonna have it over here. Right, there we go. So the signature is gonna look very similar to loop. In fact, let me copy paste that. It's 
gonna look like this. But instead of times, uh, it's gonna take the interval, interval, and the interval is going to be the finite duration like this. Okay, so we're gonna use the uh, Java Timer API, uh, and it's, it it resides in Java Util. So if you go to Java, Java Util like this, then over there we're gonna have a timer. Uh, which we'll create like this new timer it doesn't take any parameters and in Scala you can just um, leave the empty parentheses out and uh, by the end of this we're gonna we're gonna you know run the timer and uh, what we'll do is we're gonna block the current thread by expecting it input from the user uh, which is shown in, in some of the video uh, so basically we're just gonna do read line and whatever he's gonna type as soon as he presses enter the code is gonna continue over here and it will cancel the timer basically it's, it's gonna stop the timer Right? So the timer is going to tick and it's going to do something and then as soon as we press enter, it's going to cancel the timer. So um, I'm going to say here block current thread until enter is pressed. All right. So uh, this should compile now, um, almost. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, standard int. No, it's standard int. It stands for standard input. Okay. All right. So it compiles now. So what we're going to do with the timer is we're going to call only one function. We're going to say timer dot, and the function is going to be called schedule at fixed rate. And it takes a three parameters, right? It takes the task, it takes the delay in milliseconds that it's going to wait for until it's going to do the, the uh, it's going to uh, run the task for the first time, and it's going to uh, have a period in milliseconds. Uh, that it will wait until it, it uh, executes the tasks again. So now we just need to create uh, those three vowels. Okay, so let's have them over here. Uh, let's wait with the task. Let's, let's do th those first because they're, they're simpler. So um, delay in milliseconds, which is a long, is going to be zero. So we want it to start right away. Okay, and the period in milliseconds is going to be whatever whatever the interval um, that is being passed over here and we just need to convert it to millis similar um, similar to to that thing okay over here okay so uh, all we need to do now is we need to implement the task okay so it says I don't know what the task is and the task is a timer task in fact you know maybe let's call it timer task timer task uh, you can call it whatever you want uh, but I'm just going to keep um, keep this convention. This is going to be the only um, like really really complicated part of this video. Um, I explained it only in the previous video. Remember how we have like anonymous functions, and in the previous video I, I mentioned it very br briefly. I mentioned anonymous classes. So basically, there is a, there is a um, there is a class called timer task somewhere. In fact, it's not a class. It's something else. It's a, it's a concept that I haven't explained. It. It's called a trait or it comes from Java, so it's called it's, it's actually called, uh, called an interface. And we're going to extend uh, that interface. Uh, we're going to extend it and we're going to create only one instance of it. And because we're creating only one instance, uh, we can do it in line. So the same way as we can create anonymous functions, we can also create anonymous classes sort of on the fly. So we're going to say new timer task. And then instead of, you know, it doesn't have a constructor or anything like that, uh, we're just going to have curly braces like this, right? And in this, in this trade, there's a function called run that doesn't take anything and produces a unit. And all we need to do is we need to implement run. And in in the run all we need to do is we just need to call some code and that's it so i know that this is a bit more complicated than you know the rest of the video and it might be a bit early in the in, in your learning pro uh, uh, process um you know as i already said you know i'm trying to make those videos chronological so uh don't sweat about this too much so if you don't really understand this uh you know just just copy paste it and uh and you're good to go and and so at some point later you're gonna learn more about it so um Let's go through this thing again uh, real quick. So it creates a timer and it asks the timer to schedule uh, this timer task at fixed rate. So it says, uh, you know, do, do the first iteration right away and then do the iteration every whatever the interval is passed in. And the interval that we're passing in is one second, right? So basically do, do something every second, okay? And what it's going to do is it's basically going to run some code. Right? It just needs to be packed into this timer task so that um, you know the Java API is happy, and that's it. We're done. So now instead of just compiling, we're gonna say run, and now we can uh, do the old one. You know, tick for a few seconds, or we can do this one. Let's see. So now it just ticks, 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 and now I can just start typing something. It doesn't really matter what. You know, everything is sort of broken, and as soon as I press enter, it stops. Right? So I don't even need to type something. Actually, I can just say enter. There we go. 
and now it stopped. Uh, let's actually let it run for a few seconds first before I press enter. One second, two seconds, mm -hmm. enter. There we go. Before we leave, let's uh, let's actually just switch that to, to just three seconds so that we can also see the other one running because both of them still work, right? So um, the one that takes for a few seconds still works, right? And the one that ticks until we press enter, one, two, three, four, five, la, 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 enter, and there we go. All right, so we're actually by the end of this video, and um, you know, let me let me know if you if you like videos like this that are you know a bit less of tutorial but um, more fun because it's just you know just code alongs. Uh, I haven't done many of them uh, so far, uh, but I'm planning to do more of them in the future. Let me know if you if you're gonna like them or not, and um, yeah, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and see you next time. <laughs> Cheers.